Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone. So good to see everyone. I uh, am Bella Babalumian, one of the Wild Feminine Energy Activators uh, in this beautiful group that we've been growing since the beginning of this month. Um, and I really, really wanted to invite you to share this live video with who, whoever you think might benefit from learning about the feminine energy and specifically today about how to create a beautiful equilibrium between feminine and masculine energy, both on a personal level, uh, because we are composed of these uh, energies that are always working together to create equilibrium as well as at the societal level you know as we're moving from very strict patriarchal rules into something very different uh, it's very important to create this equilibrium so if you um if you are interested uh share this with people that you know um to join this wild feminine rising movement that Liana, Fabiana and I have created and that's going to continue for a while. Um, so let's get started with today's video. Today's live is going to be about something really important and it's aligned with a really incredible day that we're living today. Today is September 22nd. It's the day of the equinox. So it's the day where the night and the day are of equal length, which is a really beautiful portal uh, in nature uh, where we're reminded right, of the forces of the, the dark and the light being aligned and in, in unison, uh, of the masculine and feminine being at an equilibrium. Think of the, um, the yin and yang sign, you know, that circle that we all know about. It's that beautiful play that happens between the forces of the feminine and the forces of the masculine, uh, constantly being in contact with each other and one growing and one uh, ebbing. It's a constant flow, it's like the waves. So today is a day that's um, always celebrated as this day of really going from in the, in the, in the northern hemisphere, right, of going from the summertime into the fall, it's the first day of the fall, uh, and it's the harvest season, right? And we just also just experienced the, the harvest moon, the full moon, that was a beautiful moon two days ago. So the energies are actually very uh, overlapping right now, right? Between that uh, moon that was really about shedding everything that's not serving our full purpose uh, and for the wild feminine energy as well, everything that's blocking us from being ourselves fully uh, to this, this, uh, this day, which is the equinox day, which is about uh, creating this equilibrium. So up until now, Liana Fabiana and I have been talking about um, the importance of allowing the feminine er energy to rise. And this is still really important because uh, I think uh, most of you will agree with me that we have the masculine energies exaggerated in our societies and on an individual level. Um, for most ladies I know in the, in the group, some of you I don't know, but we are a group of very strong uh, women leaders uh, that have done a lot of important things in our uh, communities, uh, are doing really important work. A lot of times that's a very masculine energy, right? Of, of going out there and manifesting your dreams of doing, right? It's the energy of doing. Whereas the feminine energy is the energy of being, which is a really beautiful concept to think that, you know, the being and doing have to be in constant equilibrium. So if you've been doing a lot for a while, it's really important to take a break and just be so that not only you can have time to heal and rest and recuperate from all the doing that you've done, but also to go into that field of endless possibilities to think about or actually feel what's going to be your next doing. But if you don't allow yourself the time to be, you will not uh, 
in a way you will not know what to do and that's kind of what our societies have found ourselves in is in constantly doing right just like the nike uh slogan just do it it's it is important but if we are all, are constantly just doing then we're not really uh you know having time to connect to our intuition to connect to uh our creative energy of what is it that i want to bring forth into the world and that's the feminine energy and because we know how to do the doing very well i'm going to talk about how to connect to the energy of being and the, the feminine energy more in today's lives than uh, the masculine energy but we'll touch on the masculine energy as well so um one of the the really beautiful tools that the feminine uh, energy gives us is the tool of intuition of uh, this inner knowing that a few of us are connected to but uh, I know that there's a great interest in understanding how do we connect to this intuition what uh, what exactly does it mean to be connected to the intuition how to hear the signs that it's sending us and here I really want to uh, bring your attention to where the voice of intuition comes from uh, a lot of us think that it's like it's kind of like a thought right because all we really know in terms of like when we receive some kind of information most of the time it's very mental right we hear someone telling us something or even if we you know are in a meditation oftentimes it's like a thought that we will think of right um, and that's a very masculine energy as well actually the, the thinking the mental energy is a very like uh, left brain right so it's very much about reason logic the intuitive part is the right part of the brain and it's about dropping into your body and sensing rather than really hearing any information it's sensing information at a very deep cellular body level um, and it's not about just the physical body but it's also about your energetic body um, and when you can tap into that energy it's, it's, it's also been called whatever the gut feeling right uh, which is here right in your uh, right above your navel um, and it's that energy it's that immediate reaction that you have that visceral reaction to, to you have um, to you know to whatever right like, like someone asks you like do you want to go out with me a, a guy invites you to go out with him and immediately you will get a, a, a feel is this the right person to go out with or not but oftentimes we ignore that feeling and then retrospectively we'll say I knew I shouldn't have gone out with him or you know vice versa like I knew I should have you know like uh, given him my number or something like that uh, and we often ignore that because in our society we've been told that that's like we have to be logical we have to be rational that this illogical uh, intuitive instinctive part is to be uh, avoided at all costs and it's dangerous to follow your intuition but I'm here to tell you that that's bullshit, that we really need to play with both of the energies. And that's where the magic happens, when you can combine those two energies. So how do you tap into that uh, gut feeling? First of all, you have to really, really learn to trust yourself. Uh, and at first, you're going to confuse where your mind speaks and when your you know, gut feeling or your intuitive nature speaks. And that's going to take some time, but you have to really trust yourself first in order to really say, like, start seeing the distinction. Um, the intuitive part of you is, is much softer and much more, uh, you feel an expansion when you sense that yes, right? Like, so if, again, going back to that same example, if um, you feel that immediate, like, expansion inside your body then that's a clear yes um, but it's a sense that you have you don't uh, it's never going to be a choice of like should i do this or should i not if you're at that level that's already you're already in that in your head you're already in your mental part and that's the masculine energy so 
in order to connect to that feminine energy, you really have to um, allow your intuition to speak first. Um, so there are a couple of practices. I've been using one that's been really beautiful, really simple. Um, it has to do with really feeling and sensing your body. We're so disconnected from our bodies in, uh, in our modern societies. It's, uh, you know, few of us even know what's going on inside of us. Our body always guides us to the right things. And I, I work with the, what I call the sensefulness method, which is about exactly about that, about how do we reconnect uh, to the language of our body, to this ancestral, ancient uh, way of navigating through life with our senses, with our intuition, with our inner knowing because you know if you think about it back in the day no one told us you know how many calories to eat how much to exercise what foods were good for us uh, who, how to choose our partner like you know the seven steps of uh you know finding your perfect uh, soulmate like that stuff didn't exist before right so how did we navigate through life we navigated through it using our feminine intuition and this is not just about women. This is about men as well. As well. Uh, sure, like men, women are a little more connected to their uh, intuition, but men have it as well. We, we, just, we just have to train it more. Um, so the way you start connecting to your bodily inner knowing, right, dropping into your body, is by really connecting to your body like on a physical level. So every time I wake up, uh, and go to sleep. I always put my uh, one of my hands on my um, heart area, chest area, and the other one goes here on either you know on. Sometimes it could go on your belly. Uh, it could go lower on your womb area, which is also an area that's been uh, really ignored. But that's an area that knows. It has that inner knowing, especially for women. So you connect to those two areas. You close your eyes and you start breathing into your lower belly. And this is before and after sleep because those are the times when you are much more in your um, subconscious mind, like you're kind of slowing down. It'll, it'll also allow you to fall asleep and wake up uh, in much more peace. You want to connect to your body and aside from the breathing, you want to without labeling it, sense what's going on in your body. You want to sense, say, um, you know, I'm sensing this in my uh, lower hip. There's some pain. I'm sensing some um, excitement in my belly. I'm sensing um, some strange sensation I don't know how to describe in uh, my chest area. Um, so, so don't label it, but really identify uh, where you're feeling what. And those sensations are the blueprints. That, that's the language that's going to be guiding you. But you have to become literate in it. You have to uh, understand that every time I feel this sensation in my chest area, that means I'm afraid, for example. Um, and then immediately as you feel it, you will know hold on, like, why am I afraid? Like, what is causing me this? So you will be much more conscious of what's going on in your body. And be really careful because if you ignore uh, your body and those sensations for a while, which is something that happened to me, your body will start um, getting sick. At first, it'll go into the injury mode, right? So like if you're hitting yourself in a certain place all the time, or you're constantly like cutting your finger in the same place, like those are all signs that um, your body's trying to tell you something and you're completely ignoring it. So uh, your body will, you know, direct you to almost hurt yourself to like, wake up, wake up, like you're, you're going in the wrong direction. Um, and this could be from simple things of like self-care and like maybe you're not sleeping enough uh, and you're always exhausted. So your body will constantly uh, show you that in certain ways. And then eventually your body will start uh, developing symptoms and sicknesses and uh, diseases and all kinds of things that uh, I'm convinced that every disease springs from this uh, inability to listen to our body. If we are very careful about paying attention and responding uh, 
uh, to our body signals, we will pretty much never get sick. Um, and this works even if you're infected with some kind of a pathogen, you know, if you feel that immediately, uh, that you've been in contact with some something negative, or it could be an energetic thing, it could be, you know, like a pathogen, like immediately I start feeling, oh, there's something in my throat. Uh, my body is slightly tired, um, something that most people won't perceive. And immediately I go into hibernation mode. I will cancel my meetings, go rest, take all the vitamins necessary, um, take my, you know, ginger supplements and whatever, right? Whatever your toolkit is for keeping yourself healthy uh, by supporting your immune system with uh, natural remedies, right? To really reinforce what your body does best, which is healing. Uh, and it does it best when it's at rest. So as soon as you feel that first sign, you have 99% chance of curtailing and killing that virus uh, that's entering into your body. Uh, if you wait too long, then it's already multiplied and it's passed through a lot of barriers and like, you know, uh, another thing that you can do, and again, this is, this is related both to the physical and emotional. As soon as you feel something that's kind of like shouldn't, doesn't belong in my body, uh, meditation, you close your eyes for 10 minutes and you, you do that thing that I, that I, that I, that I, that I told you about and you really connect to your flow. You breathe deeply and you visualize how that negative energy comes out of you. That's a really powerful way also to, um, so this is kind of applications of like, once you follow your intuition and sort of inner knowing that something is not right, like how do you act upon it, right? Um, there's also a part, and you know, at first, once you start paying attention, uh, it'll probably direct you into the pain areas, right? So you might notice that something is hurting. You might, you know, uh, it'll, it'll, because if you've been ignoring your body, there are a lot of accumulated frustration in your body, right? But eventually if you pay attention to those pains and you bring them up and you deal with them, right? Uh, you say, I look at you, I accept you. Uh, I embrace you, I do whatever is needed to take care of you, it will go away. And then you will have this be beautiful moment where your intuition will start leading you to the very pleasurable experiences in life. And that's why I also work with pleasure a lot um, with, within the sensibleness method, uh, pleasure as your guide. Because when you start following your intuition, it'll always guide you to the very things that are pleasurable and are good for you, which is inter interchangeable. I'm not talking about the, uh, you know, some people think I'm talking about some kind of a hedonistic type of pleasure. No, it's pleasure uh, that's very healing because our bodies are designed, by design, they're made for us to sort of, um, um, it's not just survival of the fittest, it's, it's being well, right? We are designed to be well and being well means feeling good. Uh, and fe feeling good happens at a very uh, cellular and chemical level. So if you follow your intuition, uh, let's say you see that beautiful fruit hanging on a tree and you go after it uh, and you pick it immediately, all of your senses uh, receive the gratification that they, they were looking for, right? The smell, the color, uh, the texture, the taste, all of that uh, interacts with your body to create a chemical release of good, feel good hormones. And not only does it feel good to eat that apple or that fruit, but it's extremely healthy for you. Uh, so when you start acting on that intuitive level of like, what does my body need? You end up uh, healing your body because you're following its cues. Same thing goes with, uh, with exercise, right? Um, we all know it's good to get some, you know, exercise three times a week and this and that. But if you're kind of going in, uh, through the routine and you're not paying attention to like, is my body tired today? Is my body, you know, do I have more energy today? Um, do I want to uh, go and do a water activity or do I want to maybe be in the woods 
or maybe I want to dance or, you know, so there are different types of activities. So uh, your intuition will guide you to what's best for you in that sense. Um, and it, it starts from those basic things, but it also goes to really deep uh, questions in life, such as how to find your people for your relationships, right? Uh, if you're following your intuition, you will always be guided to the right people. Uh, how to find partners for your business, how to find that job, uh, how to follow your purpose in life. Um, and then, you know, eventually it leads you to a very magical realm where you basically follow your intuition in everything. You follow the signs and it's, it's like your intuition that guides you is constantly interacting with your natural environment and you're constantly given cues and you follow that and uh, you end up fulfilling your uh, blueprint and you are in constant expansion and growth. Whereas if you're always in the masculine side of doing, 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 you know, I've been told that I need to work and be productive and uh, yeah, follow rules and I shouldn't do this and I should follow these rules, then you're constantly precluding yourself from listening to your body. Your body becomes alienated. Uh, you, you become alienated from your body, right? It's like a split. You're not aligned. And then eventually your body starts uh, becoming sick. And so you keep it alive with medication, with all kinds of, you know, uh, downing whiskey and taking sleeping pills and all of those things that would not be necessary if you were just simply listening to your feminine intuition. Again, uh, as we're coming closer to the, uh, to the end of the life, it's very important that they work in equilibrium. So my personal example, I was a very uh, much, uh, I was very connected to my masculine energy when I was living in the US um, 10 years ago. So for a decade, I was very much a doer, right? I was uh, a leader, always knew what I was doing. I um, was a perfectionist. Uh, I got best grades. Uh, I always followed things through. It was very uh, kind of by the Western standards, I was a perfect uh, student, perfect child, right? But that perfection comes, comes with a huge cost. Again, uh, if you're going after that perfection, you're ignoring who you truly are. You're in disalignment with the imperfections that make you who you are. And uh, that came with a huge cost for me. I became profoundly sick with lots of different things, you know, just uh, and lots of healing experience that I will tell you in some other uh, life. But uh, I've I've learned to really pay attention to my, my body because I know it's telling me the truth. Because if I don't listen to it, I will get sick. And for me, it works that way. For other people, it might work in, in other ways. Like you might get depressed or you might get, um, uh, you, you might lack inspiration. It's, it's a different level for, uh, for, for each person. Um, and then when I moved to Brazil 10 years ago, I really reconnected with this feminine energy, which was really about just being allowing things to happen, uh, having no rules, just going with the flow, uh, which, you know, is really perfect because I, I found the perfect place to do that. Rio de Janeiro is like the perfect place to just go with the flow. And I learned that so well. And that, that became such a huge part of me. And, you know, interestingly, it was there in Rio that I had my daughter. So I became a mother, uh, which was, you know, obviously that's like the, the uh, culmination of your femininity is when you connect to this motherly creative power. I became extremely creative. I abandoned my career in international development and I made a documentary that I've, I've never done a documentary before. I had two startups, uh, latest being my pleasurable wellness, Embody Wellness Institute. Um, I started recording my first album. So it's that creative energy when you go with the flow and you allow things to happen. Imagine this is a great comparison that I uh, had access to in uh, meditation is imagine the universe, this 
vast, uh, endless field of possibilities. It's that, uh, it's that field of endless possibilities, that's our universe. That's uh, the feminine energy. It's, it's chaotic, it's full of possibilities, it's full of creation, but it's, there's nothing defined about it. It's all over the place, right? And the masculine energy is the mask is that energy of manifesting of the the of bringing all of that energy into a focal point and really uh, taking all of that energy and, and materializing it. Right? It's also a very like it's a very sexual comparison in a way. If you think of the uh, the sexual act, it's very much related to that energy. So. Um, the energy of creating and the rece like the receptive energy of the feminine and the giving energy of the masculine like they work in perfect conjunction and they're both needed to create life and they're both needed for that beautiful healing experience of uh, that sexuality can offer but we often don't have that flow Right, so long story short, for me, I became too skewed onto the feminine side, which was important for me because it allowed me to heal my body 100%, uh, which was miraculous given that I had some pretty serious uh, diseases. And so now has come the time for me of integrating the two because now if I want to take everything that I've learned and focus it and direct it into one direction, it'll take reconnecting with my masculine en energy uh, but by reconnecting to the masculine energy, I don't have to disconnect with my feminine energy, right? It's, we guys, we, we all have to learn this flow, right? Uh, it's, it's, especially for women, it's very cyclical. So allow yourself to go into phases of, uh, seclusion, of, uh, being alone, really being alone, not on some kind of social media channels, um, just really being alone in a contemplative mode and in a creative mode of, of just just being and not trying to do anything, not trying to be, um, you know, often when we're, we're uh, you know, we have an objective, even when we're going on a silent retreat, we have an objective, like try to disconnect completely from that uh, objective and really be present for yourself, for who you are, for what uh, that inner self is trying to tell you for, uh, you know, for years or maybe decades and you're not listening. So you will only listen it when you're completely in silence, where you're in this complete, uh, beautiful moment of, of, uh, contemplation and allowing and receptivity to receive, to receive these beautiful messages from yourself and from the universe, because it's all connected, right? So there's no matter. It's all, uh, energy and when you allow that lake of yourself to be still then you connect with the uh, with the Tao right the the energy that's all around us and then you're always in unison with it whatever happens here you feel it here and so it's it's like you flow with everything else and then you really then life becomes full of synchronicities and full of beautiful magical experiences because uh, you are in tune with nature and the universe and they feel you as well. It's a very beautiful process. Um, and then of course, it's really important to sometimes come out of that space and really focus and really implement and really be productive and, uh, ignore healing sometimes to really go into a rational mode and implement. But again, it's a very beautiful equilibrium. Um, our society is needed in, aside from our you know, individuals that need it from healing and from health and uh, for health, um, we need it at a societal level uh, dramatically. So when you embody uh, both feminine and masculine energies within you, uh, you become that change uh, and your energy resonates with others and you really invite others to be as well you know it's like um you know it's everyone is just doing and everyone is just following the rules and everyone thinks that you know ignoring our body and kind of pushing through is 
the way to go that then that, that's what everyone is good uh, gonna do but once one uh olympic uh uh champion says wait i'm not gonna push through i'm gonna pay attention to my me mental well-being all of a sudden a lot of us look at that and say wow maybe i should listen to my uh, emotional well-being as well because it's really important too so it takes one person and it, you don't have to be Olympic champion uh, for you to have that effect on people. So I really invite you on this beautiful day, the 22nd, uh, which numerologically is also a beautiful number. You should read about it. I don't have time to talk about that. Um, it's the day of equinox where everything is equal. So really allow that energy of dark and light to, uh, to play within you. Uh, without judgment, there's no right or wrong. There's no like the feminine and masculine. They're all part of who you are and they work best when they're working together. That's where all the fun is. That's where the dance of creation uh, happens. That's when we allow, you know, uh, life to really happen. So I invite you guys to follow our lives, our videos that we post here. Um, we're going to be announcing when the actual journey starts. Uh, this is kind of part of the pre-journey of reconnecting to our wild feminine energy, which is extremely uh, a potent energy that's been dormant for, you know, decades, centuries, millennia. And it's time to reconnect with it uh, for us to really heal ourselves at an individual level, at a societal level, and really